Today we're going to work on this 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It has a running problem where it uh, just shuts off for no apparent reason. And um, they've had it to a shop and they put it on a scanner and recorded the fault code, erased the fault code, charged them 50 bucks and sent them on their way. And we have no idea what the fault code was. So we're going to look into it, but uh, they also have a couple parts in the back that they bought. A couple uh, trailing arms for rear differential and um, they asked if we can put them on for them so we're going to take care of that so uh, let's get into this I've I've got a lot of video of this so far where I'm checking a bunch of stuff on the running and driving but I'm not uh, completed with that so while I'm working on some other things with this we're gonna go ahead and do the maintenance this Jeep has another problem um, they had ordered new trailing arms for it and he got this one on and he got that one on but do you see the problem needless to say we'll be taking this one back off and he's got two more for the top I think he ordered them because they were rusty not because the bushings were out doesn't matter these I'm not a fan of these Jeeps. I think the, the back end of them ride like crap. It always feels like, you know, the rear end's washing out from under you. Look how many weights are on that wheel. I think one of these shocks was leaking. Or both of them. So we're going to try and remedy that. Of course, the bolts in the top go into unibody. Right? Is that right? And that ought to be interesting. First things first, let's get these tires off tires are the wrong size and when you make a sharp turn they hit the front fenders and on the, the steer tires so that's fantastic but let's get the tires off get some more access to it maybe dropping these coil springs out getting the shocks off get a jack underneath here yeah, it'll be fun well that's not gonna work you can see right there that seat that wheel is just sitting right there that's all it's touching you can see how deep it is in the wheel these are the wrong wheels for this wrong lug nuts we're gonna have to dress this all right you can see this shocks leaking here so we're gonna see if we can find some replacement shocks for it i'll understand that the shock is probably maxed out you know that rear end's hanging so if we take that shock out with nothing under the rear end it's gonna likely fall down and the coil springs will pop out we don't want that to get to this shock, we got to pull this little uh, plastic panel out of here. I could just pull it back and bend it and get it out, but I'd rather just take it out. I don't want it to crack or break or something like that. What's exposed? Good old Ohio rust. We'll see if she wants to come loose and play nice. Well, look at that. a pleasant surprise okay all right uh, I'll get a jack and I need to rear end now because I don't want it falling down once I take the shocks off all right I got that one out now I'm gonna work on this top one got a little access hole right in there and that on the back side torch bit on this side so I'll probably take the nut loose here first and then work on the torques well I was able to get it out See in there, it's still usable, but what does that need cleaned up? That was a fight. It'll be fun and never sees all over the place for the rest of the day. Here's the old trailing arm, just under two, I mean, just barely under two. And this one's about 20 thousandths narrower. That ought to make for some nice, nice rattly noise. These people are so proud of their product that there's no name on it there's no name on the, the box and the paperwork or nothing it just says trailing arms only the finest quality if I leave it like that it's nowhere it's not gonna squeeze this it's it, I can squeeze this but what I'll do is I'll end up bending the, the brackets we don't want to do that so I'll have to add a shim in here to 
take that up. Whichever way is going to make it the straightest on here, because these hopefully get as straight as we can. Yeah. That's a nut we just took off of them. That upper one. I'm not going to reuse that, because the next guy will be hating life, so I'll just go get a new one. I got never seize on them, so now we're going to go ahead and um, snug them up. I don't want to tighten anything tight until we have it sitting back on its weight, because that's a rubber bushing. So think of it this way. We're going to squeeze the mounting plate, and it's going to touch these two pieces of that sleeve. And that sleeve is in the bushing. So if we have it hanging where the differential is much lower than it is at normal ride height, and we tighten it up, when we go to lift it, that pin right here is not going to twist. It's going to stay tight, and the rubber is going to twist. So we're going to put a lot of extra tension on that rubber that we don't necessarily want. So we'll uh, we'll get them all snugged up, and then once we lift it up and set it back on the ground, we'll tighten everything to its final, you know, where we want it. All right, that's this side in. Like I said, I'm not going to tighten it up until we set it back on. I'm going to get the jack stands out from underneath the body so it's sitting on here. I've also got it held up in the back with the, the grate all as well as a little extra safety precaution there, but... Now we can go to the other side. All right, you see how these are almost level now because the weight of the Jeep is sitting on and the, the spring is, con is collapsed. So the suspension has the weight. That's where we want to tighten it up. So now we can tighten these up. And, uh, now, that's as tight as I want to go that way. Now I'll put... Um, my wrench on this side and tighten it up here because I don't want to try and tighten on that Torx bit because you know, they're not exactly fantastic so I'll get a socket and a long ratchet here and tighten this up good check these right yeah, that's tight alright so now we'll go do the other side this side Oh, we got to tighten this one up too. But. So anyways, all these are where I want them. So now we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. And I replaced the nuts on the end with locking nuts. Um, the ones that were on it were in pretty rough shape. There's, uh, they all kind of look like this. And the ones on this side were spinning coming off. So I just replaced them and never seized everything. So that's all good. Um, it's had this caliper replaced. This is the original hose. Looks like the original line here. But... Uh, the front to back line looks like it's been replaced too, but they didn't put it back in the holder. It's just zip tied to the old line with them little tiny zip ties. So we're going to take all that apart. We'll put it back in where it belongs. And if you follow that new line up, it goes to this flexible hose right here. Which, uh, I got my finger on it right here. And this is the metal line it turns into. But look at the condition of this metal line, man. And that thing is just uh, one chuck hole bounce shock from from leak. And I mean, look how bad that is right there. It's just horrible. There's just nothing left. So it comes here and bolts onto the differential, and then it comes out of these two. And, and that side ain't no better. It's pretty thin too. And it comes over here. There's another spot that's dangerous, bad looking, and that one's eh not horrible but you know so we're just going to go ahead and replace that line and these lines all at the same time if i can't get that bleeder loose i'll just get a new caliper but at least we'll know that you know the brake lines are good and don't forget we still have a running problem we're trying to figure out but it is what it is i'm i'm not going to send it on its way look at this rust just laying up here this is typical ohio you know being in the salt and they don't drive this a lot so it sits in the in a gravel driveway which you know isn't helping anything either. So let's uh, let's get to work on this. So you can see they use the, the epoxy coated Napa brake line, but well, they didn't put it back in the holders. And they, these little bitty, little bitty zip ties, they're not gonna hold much. So let's get that back in there where it belongs. We'll cut out the old line, get it out of there. It doesn't have rock guard on it, which is what this spiral stuff is, that rock guard. So let's get that out of there. 
Alright, so, you know, this new line doesn't have the same outside diameter. So, just take this spiral wire conduit. It's just plastic. Cut a small section. Put it where you want it. Snap it in. See what that is? Is that easy to see? Yeah, I think so. So it's just that you can get it at Napa or wherever. Um, this just happened to come off another truck because, you know, that's how I do stuff. I just keep stuff like a, like a pack rat. Man, this kind of stuff comes in handy. Oh, look here. Easy to put on. Doesn't move because it's spiral and it's kind of tight on there. You just slide it right where you want it and snap her in place. One more to do up here. And that'll be it. Well, I'll tell you what, it's amazing what I can't see. <laughs> I know, I can't really see either. This is so easy to put on. Okay. All right. We're gonna take that loose and cap it off. All right. I'm gonna take this line loose. I don't want to lose all my fluid. So what I do is take caps off the gear oil bottles. I got them little rib serrations in them. Put that over top of there and give it a push, and it'll lock it in place and it'll stop leaking. You see how it bulges out the plastic? Now it'll stop leaking, and we can go ahead and take the rest of this apart. I'm not gonna bother with trying to get these lines out. I'm just gonna replace the ends. So I'm just gonna cut the, the break ones. That way, when I make the new ones, I'll have something to use as a template. So we'll just go ahead and cut these. Just like that. Over here. this out. I need a 10 millimeter for that. And then she can come out of here. Alright, so I'm holding the brake hose so it doesn't move the line. And use a 6 foot socket on the brake line. The nut for the brake line. That way it's a lot less grief getting us. Now we can go make our new lines. And we'll just use, we won't reuse these because uh, we don't need to. I have new ones so just replace them. All right, so I'm using the epoxy coated steel line because that's what's already on it, and I like things to match. Sometimes I use that nickel copper mix. But the first thing you got to do is I'm using my hydraulic tool. This is made by Mastercraft, Master Cool. It is a Oops. hydraulic flaring tool if you can see here it'll do 3 16 quarter 3 8 half it'll do the push to connect fittings for GM and bubble flares a bunch of different stuff you can do and uh, right now we're just using 3 16 line so first thing you do is put it into these dies which holds it the next thing we do is we take this tool which creates the first flare it takes that line and it does this so that's the first step. Put it in here, make sure you get the little tip downside the line so it lines up properly. Close the hydraulic valve, pump it until it bottoms out. Let it sit a second, back it off, take that out, change over to the cone. You can see down in here, maybe. It gives you the first. Let's turn the light on. Or not. I guess my finger's not going to work. T 
too dirty. Anyway, so it's the first flare down in there. Now we'll take this and we'll finish off the rest of it. So the cone takes it from this down to this. hold in place and clamp a line. They just have serrations inside. That's it. Like this epoxy coat line, sometimes there'll be a little bit of a pinch right here because it's a little bit thicker on the outside. So sometimes I gotta take the, the file and go where it was pinched and just file that off. I also get that sometimes if you put too much line up through because when you set that in it's supposed to be just even to that but usually I can get it cleaned up it's just uh, you can see how it gets gummed up in here all that so I gotta get all that cleaned up but other than that you know it's ready to go and here's the other one right there. it's ready to go now we're waiting on the hydraulic line the brake hose because nobody stocks it because apparently this thing is a relic and, uh, had to go against everything I believe in and go to one of the big box stores Apple wouldn't have it for a week can't wait a week that should be good all right we'll put them back on some more of that plastic loom this ABS wire used to be attached to the original line or at some point but it was loose so we just use that and now it makes it a nice tight connection two more. Look at that. Oops. Just makes such a nice fit. Get the other one on. That should be that. Right here. Okay, now we ordered the, the hose because nobody had it, so uh, we won't have that for a little while. We can put that other line on, I've already got it made. Let's go ahead, I'm putting little never sees in this area right here, so if anybody ever has to do it again, replace a line or what have you, it won't be... Uh, be a problem for him. Use an open end wrench till I get close to where I need to tighten it down, then I'll go to a line wrench. ABS wires go on here like so. Put that right there in 
metal. So, one more piece down here. <coughs> I always twist those off because then you can rub your, your hands across them and you're not all cut up, you know, and they're not sharp. Alright, so these are ready to go for the... Ooh, that's going to pop off there, isn't it? There we go. That's where I want it. <sighs> Hopefully that'll stay. Alright, so these are all ready to go for when we get the hose. We won't have shocks until when? Tuesday? couple days. I don't remember. So we're kind of at a standstill on this. I'm going to go ahead and crack the bleeders open and make sure all those are going to open up okay. So we won't have to get another caliper. If we, if we do need to get a caliper, we can get it ordered. Well, it has a hitch on it for towing, but there's no wiring for trailer lights. And we found this inside and conversation came up that we believe what may have happened was uh, he tried to put it on or couldn't figure it out or didn't understand so this kit here um, what goes on with this is it's an interrupter so there's a male and a female and a uh, female male and a female one for this would be the right side this is for the left side so they basically take the pigtail and interrupt it and tap off those signals. Now what's important about why you need this, one of the reasons you need the module is um, the module has to take the separate brake light and the turn signal and combine them to be used on one filament because most trailers don't have separate turn signals and brake lights. So the way it gets wired in is here's the module. The module, like I said, interrupts. This is the uh, right, uh, the left side. This is the right side. And then it has its own ground. It should be a terminal. Yeah, there you go. It has its own ground here. And it has its own power supply that you have to run up to the battery and install a fuse holder. Well, you see what they sent, sent with it, just these uninsulated connectors. And we don't want them to do that. So, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and help him out and install this kit so he can have um, a four pin. That's what it's going to be. A four pin. For his hitch um, I'm not sure but this may be using this module also to uh, supply power meaning the trailer lights aren't are getting their signal from the Jeep but it takes that signal in here and then uses this power to come in to actually supply the power to that signal kind of like a big relay so let's get this thing uh, taken apart and see what we can do this is uh, the roll of wire they sent Let me show you trick I did as an electrician to smooth out wire. You see how this is all wound up. Won't lay nice. Just pull that out of there. I think it's pretty good though. Now we got a nice straight wire and it'll curled up. It'll lay nice when we put up underneath there. Because we're going to find some... If we can't find loom this size, we're going to put it in air brake line. Air line for the semi truck. That will do. All right, so I'm running my wire up here. I'm gonna go onto the fuse box and I'll put it right underneath that terminal. And I'm gonna use some wire loom I had off another truck, of course, used. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I don't want this loom moving around, so I just take and wrap it around the wire a couple times first. Then wherever the wire, the tape comes down through, put the split of the loom right there. Pull it just a little bit past it, and then wrap it a couple times with electrical tape. And that will keep it 
and come loose. And you can put it wherever you like it, which my, my plan was to do something like this. So that you can see the fuse holder right next to the fuse box right here. And then we're going to run it around the firewall and we're going to zip tie it to these holders here and work our way down through. Okay. Now I have the wires coming up through this area. So I guess we don't need to take lights out. There must be a junction here. Oh, looky there. Oh, would you look at that? It's right there. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been in here. And look. Here's my wire with the loom. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So, we'll have to put the module on one side, which obviously we'll put it here. I should have looked at that module and make sure there was enough wire to go from the other side. Like, you know, whatever. It is set up to go on the driver's side because the uh, yellow is for left and green is for right. And obviously they're grabbing the stop light off that side as well and the parking light off of this side. So we're just going to take this connector apart and interrupt it. Plug in uh, a little reggie. Nope. This one here, and I'm going to mount that module up in here like this. So I'm going to get me a self-tapping screw and get that mounted. And then we also need a ground in here. Now I'm not going to use that same place for the ground. I'm going to bring the ground down here in the bottom where I have two pieces of metal on top of each other, so I'll get a little bit more bite on it cleaned up a spot right here and I've already drilled a hole for the self-tapping screw and what we're going to do is I've cleaned up off all the paint we're going to put this serrated washer on the back side of that eyelet and then we'll put it in here for our ground Troubles here because my wire is not laying nicely. Roll this way and lay nice. Okay. Now I run this in, even though it's two pieces of metal. Get really careful not to strip that otherwise we'll have to go in there and put a, a nut there we go all right so now we have a good ground and i have the module mounted so the next thing i'm going to do is go ahead and terminate my module power from the battery which is not hooked up yet to here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull this this back and Cut it off. I'm gonna cut it off right around here. I want I want you to be able to see that there's a connection here because I'm gonna use a uh, butt connector with a heat shrink over because it it's inside, and um, that way if there's ever any problems, you'll know there's a, a butt connector right there. Got everything zip tied in real good. I think we're gonna leave this the four pin. Um, we're gonna leave it inside. So it can just tuck behind here, and when he needs it, he can just take that off and then just lead it out here. Because there's a nice weather strip here, and it's plenty long. There's no sense in running it outside just to be out in the weather for as rare as he's going to use that. So we're just going to tuck it up in there for him. But now we need to get this one over to the passenger side. Alright, so here is the connector on this side. So all I have to do is interrupt it. Zip tie this to it. I can't see you. 
zip tie this to here. Those things that don't move, don't rub. All right, now I have to decide if we're going under the carpet. Looks like a good spot, don't it? You know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put this in a loom across here and let it go under the trim right there. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's get some loom. All right, now we can put the last piece of trim back in and make sure we're not touching the wire. We're not, these in there nice. Now we need to hook the front up and then we can test it. So here's the wire. I've got it routed around here so it won't rub anywhere and I've got it zip tied. And then I took a couple um, insulated straps and put them into the cowl here so that it would hold it up and it wouldn't droop and it wouldn't interfere with anything with any maintenance or stuff like that comes over here and then goes down the frame rail. Parking light. Parking okay. lights, okay. Yep, now we're gonna go left turn, which should be the yellow, should be this one. Yep. All right, now we're gonna go the right turn. Yep. Okay, we're good to go. Let's put it all together. So it's down here zip tying my line for that trailer light module. Down along the bottom of the Jeep here. I got up to here and I'm like, huh, doesn't look right. Well, looky there. I'll be getting rid of that too. Draining that line so I could uh, flare it properly and once this is empty look down in there look how bad and gross that is so this is held on with a roll pin here just take a roll pin punch and drive it out this way careful not to break the master cylinder and then we can work this back and forth because it's just sitting in some rubber grommets down there we get it off we can clean that thing out well i couldn't get it all but I got, I'd say, the most of it. So now we can put it back in. Which isn't a big deal. We're just going to put them in and drive the roll pins back in where they were. I got my hydraulic tool in here. And I'm flaring that factory line so that we can do away with that compression fitting that was on there. Tell you, this this hydraulic tool it really makes it so much easier. Let's so get this crimped in. Get this pumped here. I cut that sheathing back a little bit, that protective stuff, so we could see that. Make sure. I want to make sure that we're, once we're bled, we put pressure on the line. We don't have any leaks on my flares. So I cut that back a little bit, and now we've got it in the, the holders here. Has a better look at that spiral loom I was telling you about. You see what it is? It just goes over top of that and it takes up the the difference in thickness from the the rock guard that's on it so now go back here i gotta put it back in that holder we're gonna be a little bit shorter now so i'm gonna have to manipulate that line just a little bit so we can get into the new rubber line back there got my new brake hose i need to find a nut to fit that i assume it's gonna be metric because the old one was just rusted away all right, we got our line in. We are secured front to back, and now we're gravity bleeding. I've got, I uh, always start with the farthest bleeder. Crack it open, let it go, let it gravity bleed, because the master cylinder is higher than 
the caliper so once it gravity bleeds down we'll close that one then we'll open this one let it gravity bleed and then once both of them have we'll cut we'll shut that one off right there and we'll start bleeding with the pedal from this one all right the brakes are all bled and i got the fluid topped off so we are done with that part we're waiting on shocks and some other stuff so all right first thing i want to do is i'm going to never seize anti-seize whatever you guys like to call it this the stud and the threads because if they ever have to be changed again i don't want them to be seized up so we'll just get a coat of never seize on there <clears throat> we'll do the same thing on the bottom bolt as well <clears throat> i got these shocks uh from summit racing i just typed in the part number that i needed and uh search it on their website because um everywhere else the same part number was 52 dollars a piece at summit it was like 56 or something like that for the pair of them together so it was a good savings when i'm putting a shock or any bolt in a vehicle especially shocks um i drive them in the way that leaves the most room on the other side so if that would happen to seize inside that that sleeve and it's tough to get out you know if i put the bolt in this way you'd have no way to really hit it with a hammer air hammer what have you so i put it in the way that gives me the most room to force it out if i need to all right so these are aluminum wheels so i put never sees around the axle stub because that is where it can get stuck on the inside of the wheel the aluminum goes on here and i don't like to fight it so just in case i just put a little never sees over here all the way around it just a little bit's all we need and that way at least the two dissimilar metals aren't going to seize together you can see where the where the uh aluminum wheel has rest on the rotor i'm not concerned about that because that's just a simple break this way but it's when we have a 90 degree like this where we can get some corrosion in there and spread and swell and then it's hard to get it off all right go ahead a little bit of up and down play all right what i'm really concerned with is any play that is um like this way that's more concerning than this little bit of up and down play okay that's good i'll see how much time they can let me have if i've got enough time now we'll we'll do these if not we'll wait until they can you know give me some more time again so we're gonna go ahead and change that wheel that tire out and jack up that side and we'll check that ball joint too now i'm checking ball joints on these we have to get all the load off the ball joint that's why we jack the truck uh, jack the axle up so there's no load we just need the tire off the ground because the coil spring sits on top of the solid axle so then this is just sitting here and then the wheel can move freely so that's what we're trying let's go ahead and wiggle back and forth left to right let's check the front end while you're there grab that wheel middle ways right here middle ways there front end's got some new front end parts on it and it felt tight yeah i don't see anything it's got a new steering damper on it right there okay all right let's get this side checked the ball joints all right this side has absolutely no movement up and down or top to bottom or left to right so we're good all right, so we're just gonna keep an eye on this because they need the Jeep back and I still have to figure out the running problem. So now we're gonna get this last tire changed out. Now he's just gonna torque all the lug nuts. One of these chrome cap lug nuts. are torqued we are now ready to go for a drive so let's go take this thing for a test drive battery was a little bit low hmm they want to load test this when we get back all right let's get down the road 
Well, it rides much better than it did. The back end doesn't feel like it's washing out anymore. The uh, There's no noise at the rear end anymore. There's no knocking, no banging, so that's good. And the brake pedal feels fantastic. It's a, a really good, firm pedal. Stops well. I'm happy with that. That uh, vibration we had in the front end, which I assume was a bad belt or something, uh, and one of them tires, it's gone. It goes down the road nice and straight. No pull, no nothing. I'm pleased with that. So now we just need to dig into the drivability problem. Uh, it just shuts off sometimes for no apparent reason. So we'll dig into that. If it turns into anything, we'll bring you back with another video. But I think that's it for this one, guys. We're going to call this a success. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I talked to the uh, the owners, and they don't obviously see the miles, the 117 in 1996. They don't drive it a whole lot, so we're just going to keep an eye on the ball joints in the front end. That I did go ahead and grease the front end, uh, just so, you know, a little bit of maintenance there. And gave it a good looking over. All the brakes are good, the rotors are good. So they should be good to go for a while. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you on the next one.